participatory culture. And the idea was that um, we wanted to allow an audience the, the opportunity to sort of to uh, answer back to some of the, uh, the themes of the film. And the way we wanted to do that was by sort of a call and response model, where um, I would post um, I would post uh, scenes from the film, and I would actively invite um, others to remix those scenes and submit them for inclusion in the final film. We came to that sort of understanding after many experiments, where at first we would just say, what do you think about um, you know, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, or whatever it was that was the subject of the film? And we got sort of zero response. And, and, and the reason for that was because we hadn't sort of uh, given them something to respond to. It was sort of like a an, an open question, um, and the, the the result was that uh, we actually had you know hundreds and hundreds of people kind of re remixing the film as as it was going along, but it took us in directions that we wouldn't have otherwise gone in, and it allowed people to sort of answer back to the film as we were making it. And then once we finished it, we kind of released it as a beta of a film, and while we were touring it to festivals, we said, you know, here's an opportunity to remix it once again before we have a kind of a final version of that. But that final version that we actually made, when it came time to broadcast it, um, there was some frustration uh, around the opportunities that we had to put it online. You know, we toured it to film festivals, we showed it in theaters, we showed it on television, and then when it came time to put it on the web, it was basically the same thing as, uh, as putting it on TV. It was just sort of in a box, on a page, uh, it was an embedded TV, right? And I thought it was sort of a shame because I had spent years kind of researching it. I, the, the people that were in the film were, were continuing to have discussions about the, the topics. There was tons of Wikipedia articles that uh, were related to the subject of the film. And that's really when we started to launch Popcorn. So let me just show you. You can all see these two boxes here, right? Yep. You can, you can yep. see these two boxes, yep. correct? Yep. Let me show you the very, very, very basics of what popcorn does, because I think it's actually kind of a, a light bulb, people, people get it. Well, so, why don't you all move a bit closer, so yeah, you can you actually see this. Or I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay. We'll pray for the network as well. With the screen, if you more up. Okay. So, so here's a video, a linear video that's playing, right? And you have some text over there. Now in about five seconds, the word pop will appear there, right? Now at a different time, I've linked an image and put it in that area of the screen. Now I want to show the location of where this guy is, so I have a map of New Orleans. The, the scene changes and he goes to South Africa. Now I want a Google map based on South Africa. These are all the recent uploads that this person that's in the film has made to Flickr. And this is like what people are saying about Will Ferrell right now on Twitter, right? And all of those things I can do because in, in the time regions of the video, I, I've just given them, um, I've just given that as links, right? And so Popcorn has a really, really simple syntax and a way to do this that's just written in, it, it's, it's based on JavaScript, but we, what we've done is created a library so that you don't have to write all of this JavaScript from the beginning, all you have to do is define the starts and the ends and what you want to happen. And, and so we come out with this, with the whole series of plugins that do a lot of standard things. I want to show a Wikipedia article. I want to query uh, Twitter. I want to uh, pull from Flickr. All those ship as just sort of standard plugins for popcorn. So the documentary space is something that we've been exploring from from the very, very, very beginning. So here is a European uh, work called Europe, European. <coughs> uh, and what this is, this is a documentary that's exploring genealogy. So what they've done is they've taken, uh, there's a woman who's trying to find her the roots of her father who was a veteran in the First World War. So that's him, right? And then you can see that the, there's these regions of the video of the of the film. Can you all see that? Sorry, that that begin to pop up, right? And so she says, uh, "My name is uh, my name is Louisa." And she says, 
I was born in Libau, Germany. Now there's the map of that area that comes up, and I can click on that, and I can explore that region. Uh, and it pauses of, the of film the while you're doing that. And it pauses the film if you want it. But those sort of user interaction cues are really the um, at the discretion of the author. So if they decide that they want them to appear to the left or to the right or on the bottom or the top, that's all uh, up to the author to decide. Just like when you're creating a web page, you lay it out how you want. But what we, we provide is the sort of engine to be able to do that and then leave it up to um, authors to sort of find out they want it. I'm sorry for those of you who didn't attend our first popcorn session that we didn't do that right away. Because <laughs> I think that that's the basics of what this whole popcorn thing, and I know that you've probably heard it all day and we're going like, what the fuck is popcorn? 